Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining today's webcast. My name is Rebecca and I'm a content editor here at GitLab. Today we're going to be showing you some of the highlights from our latest release, demoing the biggest features and taking your questions. And I'm quickly going to go through a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Firstly, this webcast is being recorded and we'll share the recording via email to everyone who registered. We'll save questions for the end of the webcast, but please feel free to type them in the Q&A as you think of them. It's located at the bottom of your webcast console. As many of you know, we ship a new version of GitLab on the 22nd of every month. This month we released GitLab 8.16, marking our 62nd consecutive monthly release. You might have missed us last month because of the holidays. We didn't do a webcast for 8.15, so we'll cover that and 8.16 in this one. Today we've got two great presenters. Mark is our head of product, and he's been working on bringing you auto-deploy, web terminal, and Prometheus monitoring, which he'll talk more about later. Our product manager, Regis, will talk about time tracking for the community edition, show other improvements we've shipped in 8.16, and tell us a little more about what's next for GitLab. After that, you'll have a chance to ask any questions you might have. For those of you who are new to GitLab, I'll start with a quick intro to Git and GitLab, and then I'll pass it over to Mark and Regis to show us what's new. At GitLab, we know that the right tools can help you to ship quality code faster, reduce effort, and cut administration costs. So we're redefining how software is built to provide the most efficient approach to software delivery. With a unified experience for every step of the development life cycle, GitLab helps teams to create and deliver quality products. If you're not familiar with GitLab, it helps to start with what Git is. Git is a method of coding that allows developers to store a local copy of their source code, propose changes to it, and share those changes with others. Since each developer maintains a local copy, it's incredibly easy to work offline and merge changes later. This is called a distributed version control system. Git was designed for distributed teams that have to work together across geographies and time zones, but it's now common to find teams based even in the same office using it as a tool that helps them to iterate faster and collaborate more naturally. GitLab is built on top of Git, and it's an integrated set of tools for the full software development lifecycle. Our platform includes Git repository management that acts as your single source of truth in a distributed version control workflow. It also includes code review and diff tools with tons of collaboration and workflow management features. We've built in an issue tracker with issue boards, cycle analytics, time tracking, and a project wiki. These features help teams to work more efficiently and can be used by non-technical team members too. Then to help you manage everything, GitLab offers permission management such as user roles and their level of access to change your code. So most of the things you've seen on the previous slides are what you would expect to see. But as I mentioned, GitLab is an integrated set of tools for the full software development lifecycle. So we've built a number of great features and workflow best practices right into your, our product. We offer a built-in continuous integration and deployment system, which tightly integrates testing and deployment into your workflow. We also offer a built-in container registry to store container images. Now let's see how these tools take you from idea to production. Over to you, Mark. Thanks, Rebecca. At GitLab, our goal is to offer a product that can take you all the way from your ideas in the earliest stages to actually shipping them in production. We've broken it up into these 10 steps. And traditionally, you'd have many independent tools to do this. Several months ago, our founder and CEO, Sid, put out a public challenge that we would ship in a single package, this entire workflow, so that everything you do, you can do within GitLab, and that we'd ship it by the end of the year. I'm ecstatic to say that at the end of 2016, with the 8.15 release of GitLab, we brought this vision to reality. For the idea stage, we believe a lot of ideas come from chat. So we have a chat client, Mattermost, that ships with GitLab's Omnibus installation. And we recently integrated both Mattermost and Slack for chat commands. Then we have GitLab Issue Tracker, and we recently released GitLab Issue Board for planning. 
For coding, we have our online file editor, but now with 8.15, we have a new web terminal, which I'll show later. For committing, of course, we've got GitLab repositories. For testing, we've got GitLab CI CD for continuous integration and testing, and container registry. For review, there's merge requests, and recently we added review apps to see a live preview of merge requests. For staging, GitLab CI CD has been heavily extended to include continuous delivery. For production, we support continuous deployment with GitLab CI CD, and we now have chat ops integration with Mattermost and Slack. For feedback, we recently launched Cycle Analytics, and I'm really excited to announce we've started bundling Prometheus for monitoring in GitLab 8.16. Now on to some highlights of the 8.15 and 8.16 releases. We want everyone to quickly get a fully functioning CI CD pipeline that deploys to a container scheduler. It shouldn't require any effort to get started, but should also be scalable and not hide any of the magic. Auto deploy does this. Auto deploy adds a single button to your project that when clicked, will create a merge request with a template that will automatically deploy your application using Docker to your container scheduler. The cool thing about this is that this immediately leverages review apps, meaning you can see it working before even merging the merge request. This is as close as you can get to one-click deploys while exposing what is happening and having all of this be version controlled, ready to collaborate and iterate on. In 8.15, we shipped auto-deploy with a template for deploying to an OpenShift cluster. And in 8.16, we added support for Google Cloud's container engine, or GKE, which is a Kubernetes platform. Under the hood, we use Docker, or if no Docker file is present, we use Heroku build packs to package up your application into a Docker image that then is deployed to Kubernetes. We want to add support for more container schedulers and cloud platforms later, such as Mesos and Docker Swarm, but contributions are very welcome in our template repository. Working together with your container scheduler, GitLab happily spins up several dynamic environments for your projects, be that for review apps, or for a staging or production environment. Traditionally, getting direct access to these environments has been a little painful. And that's a shame. It's very useful to quickly try something in a live environment to debug a problem or just to experiment. With the web terminal, which shipped in 8.15, this becomes extremely easy. Just visit the environments page in your project and click on the terminal button. GitLab will SSH into the instance for you and allow you to tinker away. We've previously shared a webcast with an extensive vision for making world-class monitoring easier for everyone. And with GitLab 8.16, we have taken our first step towards that goal. In this release, we have included Prometheus and its node exporter as part of our omnibus package. This will provide high quality time series monitoring of your GitLab server's resources. Both Prometheus and node exporter are off by default for this release, but we plan on having them on by default, starting with GitLab version 9.0 that is scheduled for March 22nd. For now, simply enable the features and reconfigure GitLab. After you have enabled Prometheus, you have access to the Prometheus console, or you can connect to a compatible dashboard tool such as Grafana. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. In the coming months, we'll be adding monitoring to auto-deployed apps so you can see performance charts for your own apps right inside GitLab. Okay, that's enough time to uh, talk. Let's uh, jump into a demo here. Start screen sharing. Okay, looks like it's up. So here I'm going to show off auto-deploy Terminal and Prometheus monitoring all running on a fresh installation of GitLab on Google Container Engine. Since it actually takes several minutes to spin up a new cluster, I've already gone ahead and spun it up on Google Cloud Platform under the Container Engine section. So here's our new cluster. This is the one I've made for the demo. Um, 
pretty straightforward. I've actually followed the instructions in this Kubernetes, Kubernetes uh, GitLab demo um, repo here. It's really straightforward. It just does take several minutes to go through, especially the first time. Um, but basically, it's all there, um, no magic involved. And here is our Kubernetes dashboard showing off um, the pods that we've created for, uh, for GitLab. So now I'll switch over to the GitLab instance itself. And I'll start from a really, you know, creating a new project, just to create a really simple project here. I'm going to import my existing project. I'll make this one public. Takes a second to import. Right. Again, this is a really, really trivial um, project. Uh, nothing fancy here, just literally two files, Docker file and a single Ruby file. The first step here is I'm going to configure this project to talk to our Kubernetes cluster. Activate this. And first step is to get the API URL. You grab that actually from the cluster itself. And then now I need a token and um, certificate. And I grab that from Kubernetes dashboard. Click save and I'll just click test just to make sure. Great. <clears throat> so that's it. Now that we've set up Kubernetes, see on the project there's this new button here called Setup Auto Deploy. I click on that and I pick Kubernetes from the drop down and I get this CI CD configuration script. It's fairly long, um, pretty straightforward though, and luckily everything's configured for you. The only thing I need to do here is change the domain for all of my apps. Great, so we see that it's actually kicked off um, a pipeline run. The ICD is already configured for this because of this auto deploy. And in just a couple of minutes, it'll actually finish. And watch the progress here. The build is actually finished already. Now creating the review app. Great, and now it's done. I see now that it has created this review app. I click here, um, I can actually go and watch. Just a second. There it goes. Um, the deploy actually finished, but it did take a little while for the container to finish, uh, finish configuring. So anyway, there we go. Hello world on a review app, all done automatically. Very few clicks, um, really, really straightforward. And just uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, we can go back to the review, uh, the merge request, and we actually see that from the merge request itself, it tells me about this deployment and even gives me a link directly there. So anybody else who's reviewing this merge request who wants to look at the code, but then also see it actually running, can just go click on there. So really great feature, um, really easy to develop. So that's auto deploy. Now let's take a look at terminal. If we go back to this, we see that there's a little button there. I click on that and I get connected to that, um, to the running instance. Here I can see our files there. 
I might even want to make some changes. This has actually worked. Back to there, and here we go. Um, I just updated the change um, on the terminal itself, and uh, went and updated that app, and now it's running and, and changing, you know, showing on updates. So great for tinkering around. Um, not so great for production stuff. I mean, this is in version control. Of course, you want to go back and put that back into version control. But if you just wanted to fix a little quick thing and see how it ran without having to pull up everything locally, it's, it's a great way to get started. So now that's um, terminal. Last thing I wanted to show off was Prometheus. And here is the Prometheus console for the, um, for GitLab itself. Um, for security, if, if you're really observant here, you'll notice I'm on localhost. Um, for security purposes, the Prometheus um, server isn't exposed by default on this configuration. So I've actually set up port forwarding from the Kubernetes cluster to my localhost 9090, just so that I can see access on that. Um, all right, here I'm just going to copy and paste a quick query and pull up a graph. And so we can see for the last hour what CPU load was. Obviously, it was pretty idle while I wasn't doing anything. And then we started doing the demo, and load kicked up a little bit. And I'm going to copy and paste another one here for memory usage. Um, same thing, but basically memory bumps just a little bit while we started using it. So great, great start here. Um, Prometheus is an awesome tool, lots and lots of traction in the industry, and we're really excited to have it be part of GitLab here. So that's it for the demo. We just take it away. Thanks, Mark. Um, let's now talk about another exciting feature, time tracking. So time tracking was released in 8.14 as a beta feature for the Enterprise Edition. Time tracking lets you record estimates and time spent on issues and merge requests. This is a powerful reporting tool as well as a good planning tool. Since the introduction of time tracking, the usage of this feature on gitlab.com has been massive. Moreover, we've received a lot of feedback about the fact that time tracking could be used by companies of all sizes and not only for companies with more than 100 employees. For these reasons, we've decided to bring time tracking back to CE, the community edition. So it is now available for everyone. And by the way, if you want to see how time tracking works, you can rewatch the webcast for 814 where we demo it at length. But there is another thing we have brought with this release about time tracking. We've added an API to time tracking. So from now on, everything you can do in the UI can be done with the API. All the new API methods are in the documentation, so feel free to take a look and do awesome stuff with it. And by the way, if you do create integrations for time tracking, let us know because we'd love to hear about them. In 8.16, we've also improved a popular feature, the merge request approval. Merge request approvals have been around on the Enterprise Edition for a while, and they've just received some love in our latest release. The merge request approvals mechanism is simple. You can define a set of approvers for merge requests that are submitted. You won't be able to merge these merge requests unless all approvers have given their consent on the work done. But until now, once the approval was given, there was no way of undoing the action. There is now a handy button that lets you remove your approval if you've given it. And as an added bonus, you now also see who have already approved a merge request. What else did we ship in X16? Well, we've launched a new way to search and filter issues. The interface is more intuitive and natural. And more importantly, this change will serve as a foundation for the future iterations we've planned for the search bar. You can now be more in control of, of how your organization uses GitLab CI CD with the ability to limit the usage of shared runners by limiting the build minutes per group. 
Another cool feature, you can now use slash merge in a comment or a merge request body to merge the merge request automatically. We've also received a great number of contributions that we've added to the community edition this month. For instance, deploy keys can now have write access. There are no changes on your current keys. Moreover, by default, all deploy keys are read only. Another contribution is to show the last use date of your SSH key in your account. That's super handy. Finally, we now display how the space of your project or your group is used. Before, we indicated the total storage, regardless of what it contains. Now, we tell you the, de the details with how much space the repositories, build artifacts, and LFS take separately. That's it for the overview. We've added a lot of other small details and improvements here and there, so I invite you to read the blog post to learn everything about A16. And what about upcoming features in the next releases? First of all, we'll bring squash commits and auto rebates for merge requests. This is a highly requested feature, and we are pleased to announce that it's coming soon. We'll also give more love to issue boards. We think issue boards are a very valuable tool to plan your project, and we think it has a lot of potential. <clears throat> we'll introduce features that change how team works when shipping software. One of these features is the ability to make sure you don't merge code that contain external dependencies with licenses that can be harmful to your project. For instance, you will be able to prevent adding dependencies with copyleft licenses. We also want to provide better audit logs and events. That way, you will be in control of what the users do in your GitLab installation. And we also introduce on March 22nd GitLab 9.0, which we'll talk more about in the next release. And finally, let's very briefly talk about our vision for the first quarter of this year. So in 2016, we've completed our vision that we call From ID to Production. We've dramatically simplified what it takes to have an ID and go through all the steps required to ship this ID to production all in one tool. We are very proud of this achievement, but we also know that it's still somehow difficult to set up and use. For Q1 of this year, we want to allow everyone to be able to replicate it by simplifying the entire process. To hear more about our plan for 2017, uh, uh, watch the video made by Job, our VP of product, in the link indicated in this slide. And now back to you, Rebecca, for a round of questions. Thanks, Regis. Now is your opportunity to ask Mark or Regis any questions you have about these features or the latest release. Uh, but I'll kick things off first with a question for you, Mark. Um, in your demo, you showed us how to use auto-deploy with Kubernetes using Google Container Engine. Would this work on any Kubernetes cluster? Uh, yeah, Rebecca, thanks. That's a good question. So. The auto-deploy template should work for any Kubernetes cluster there, but the demo, um, you know, that demo repo that I showed you with the instructions, that's all written specifically for, G for GKE and relies on a couple of the G Cloud um, functions. But basically, it shouldn't be that hard to translate that to any Kubernetes cluster. We're not relying on um, really much more than just authentication and things like that. Whereas previously we had an OpenShift version, which definitely did rely on OpenShift to do a lot of things. We've taken control of that and, and we built it all in. So it should work um, pretty well with Kubernetes, but um, you may have to change the instructions a little bit. And for that matter, please do comment on the project itself. If you do run in, into any problems with your own type of cluster, we'd love to um, help everybody learn from this and make sure that it does work on every Kubernetes cluster. Okay, thanks for that. Um, I've got a question from Patrick. Uh, he wants to know if there are any plans to add some configuration management, because currently there is very good workflow for development, but not for configuration management. So that's a good question. We definitely have a lot of people using GitLab for configuration management. Um, so a lot of people would argue that it does everything today. Clearly a lot of our effort you know, with the CI, CD has been around um, you know, actual code and not configuration management. Um, but the CI CD configuration, the GitLab CI YAML file, is under version control itself. And so, as much as you leverage um, GitLab CI CD for your configuration management, um, that is all version controlled. If you have other suggestions for features um, or, you know, improvements to the workflow, we'd be happy to hear about them. 
uh, you know, the best way to do is create issues on GitLab CE uh, and, you know, we'll follow up on any individual ideas. Thank you. Um, Daniel uh, would like to know, um, he says, uh, GitLab has been adding great features for web developers. Can we see how some of these tools can be used by embedded developers? Oh, that's a great question too. Um, clearly a lot of what I've shown there is, is most tuned for web development. The CI side of it uh, obviously works across the board. You can compile you know, any embedded language or whatever, you know, it's all fine. The CD side, you know, it's, it's probably a little less so. We're not automatically going to be deploying or spinning up review apps or anything equivalent um, in any kind of embedded um, software world there. Um, that's again a, a scenario where if you've got ideas, we'd love to hear them. Our focus has been on the web developer uh, for continuous deployments. Um, but, you know, depending on how you're using it, some of those pieces will translate over, but not everything. Okay, um, Patrick would like to know, is the file locking feature coming to the CE edition? Um, thanks, Daniel, for the question. Uh, so at this point, no, uh, file locking feature will remain in the uh, enterprise edition. And uh, perhaps it's, uh, it's a good uh, moment to uh, very briefly talk why. Um, that's because um, we, we'd love to give everything to the community edition, but somehow we still need to have some value in our enterprise edition offering um, in order to sustain the development actually of the community edition, right? So, um, uh, because we still need to, uh, well, to, to, to generate uh, some, some, um, some revenues, right? So, uh, for this reason, this is the kind of stuff that will remain in the, in the, in the enterprise edition. Okay, um, Pascal has a question uh, about squashing and rebasing. Is that coming to the community edition? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's definitely related. Uh, at this point, squashing and rebasing is scheduled to be available on the EE starter edition uh, for the same reasons. Okay, um, Patrick has another question. Is it possible to enrich the milestone feature like the issue boards? Um, thanks, Patrick, for this question. Um, definitely, we we still like the milestone feature, and uh, we haven't put much more emphasis into it at this point. But we will in the future. For instance, we have uh, two things that we want to do in the short, medium term. Um, it's uh, bringing a burn down charts to milestones, uh, which I think people will love, and also add some kind of uh, reporting to it. For instance, um, with the introduction of time tracking, um, we could we could leverage all those data that we have about time tracking and put them on the milestone and have some kind of nice reporting with that. So um, this is this is what we want to do in the future for uh, for the milestone. Well, the kind of things that we want to do uh, in the milestone view. Okay, um, Mario would like to know if there are any plans to integrate with Rancho. So we don't have any plans specifically yet. Um, I've been following Rancher a little bit, and I'm kind of impressed with what they're doing. And we'd happily support you know anybody who wants to submit a contribution there. Um, but we'd be mostly looking for you know them to support that and add you know, capabilities. At the moment, we are focused strictly on Kubernetes. It's just we've got to have some focus, um, and we want to do a great job with that before we really look at expanding into other solutions. Okay. Um, Maciek, I apologize if I'm uh, not pronouncing your name correctly. Um, Maciek would like to know uh, if uh, there are, um, sorry, I've lost it. Are apps deployed using auto deploy production already? Uh, that is, do the templates support multi multiple app replicas for HA? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you know, production ready is, you know, something you've got to define yourself. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say that these auto deploy apps are going to be production quality for everybody. Um, you know, I think of it sort of probably more like a Heroku level, like, you know, we've got, uh, you know, you can have multiple servers and containers will spin up and things like that, but, you know, is it, is there automatic failover and things like that? No, definitely not. Um, so, you know, it's for, you know, maybe you'd call it for small production apps. 
Um, but I'm, I'm sure you'll want to build from there with your own best practices and what you would really want from for your real lab. Okay. Um, Michael would like to know, is it possible to view a time tracking overview for multiple repos or projects? At the moment, no. Uh, the time tracking capabilities are only tied to the issues and the merge request themselves. But um, in the future, we definitely want to offer this kind of stuff, right? So we had to start somewhere anyway, uh, because we are uh, always trying to ship a very minimal viable product right into into the into print production. Um, but in the future, this is the kind of stuff definitely that would be very interesting, especially for um, for large group of uh, of projects or even large companies when they have multiple uh, uh, projects, multiple groups. Um, and having the possibility to have an overview of all that would be extremely useful. And uh, this is definitely something that we are aiming to do. And for that, I uh, suggest. Uh, all people who are listening to go to our issue tracker for EE or CE, but for EE at the moment, this is where you'll find the time tracking features and, and look for the time tracking la label and everything that we are planning to do in the future for time tracking or that is being discussed at least uh, is, is here and feel free to contribute to add your point to any issues that we have. Um, we we'll really appreciate it. Okay, we have a question from Elric. Are there any plans for supporting chat ops over Microsoft Teams? Yes, um, we've been considering it. Um, so there is an issue for that in the GitLab CE tracker, issue tracker. So you can just look for Microsoft Teams integration and we are discussing this, this exact topic at the moment. So feel free to also contribute. Okay, Charles asks, are there any plans to add templates for applications? Yeah, it looks like he added a follow-up there, specifically um, deployment templates for, say, Django or Java Spring. So I guess there's two answers there. One is we've actually had um, CI CD templates for specific languages for a while. Um, when you go, to, if you use the web interface and you go to create a new file and you name it or you click on configure CI, you can have a drop down there with a bunch of different choices, different frameworks and languages and whatnot. You can just pick from that list. Um, but in addition, the new auto deploy template is kind of magical in the sense that it uses the Heroku build packs to automatically build several different language frameworks. So uh, Ruby and Python and everything else, it will just auto detect whichever one that is and compile it appropriately. So now with a single template, you actually get all of those different languages. But yeah, we do have language ones, earlier ones that were specific for different frameworks. Okay, we've got another question from Matchik. Uh, how do you support database migrations when using auto deploy? So that's a great question. Um, the basically right now it's uh, it's not auto. There's no migrations built into auto deploy yet. Um, so you would probably want to edit your out of the auto deploy script uh, to put in migrations when you uh, see fit. Um, it's something we're definitely thinking about. It makes sense to have them, uh, especially for review apps, any kind of database change, you'd want to be able to, to do that. It does spin up, you know, it'll load your seeds database or something like that. But, um, but yeah, you'll probably want to put migrations in uh, yourself. Okay, uh, we have a follow up question from Daniel about milestones. He says, I would mm -hmm. love to see milestones display issues like the issue boards, maybe as part of group level issue boards uh, filtered by milestone. Do you have any comments about that? Um, yeah, uh, we, have, we actually haven't thought of it yet. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a nice idea that could be discussed definitely. So um, uh, Daniel, either you, you go to uh, create an issue about it in our tracker or, or I will do it after this call and we'll be able to, to discuss it. I think it's... Uh, it's a it's a it's a nice idea. Okay, um, Vijay Gopal has a question. Um, he would like to know about any option to add the deploy key to an entire group instead of a single project. That's a good question. I'm sure we have an issue on this. I don't have it offhand. Um, there's a lot of things we'd like to be able to do expose at the group level instead of a single project. Um, I think that'll just come in time. Um, one thing to point out is depending on how what you're using deploy keys for, 
Uh, we have changed the user model recently. So at least for GitLab CI CD, if you're doing things on the runner, runner now can do a lot of things on behalf of the user that trigger the pipeline. And so that means that if you've got sub modules or if you want to pull down a new Docker image from a different project, as long as the person that triggered the pipeline has access to that project, you know, whether it be group wide or even on a different group, they will be able to do those things. Whereas several months ago, you couldn't do that. Um, so a lot of the things that people were using deploy keys for, you don't really need to anyway, um, need them anymore. Okay, uh, had, uh, last chance. Follow up there. Oh, about, sorry. Oh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just thought you had a, a follow up there about mass assigning deploy keys. I'm not quite sure what you meant about that, but we we definitely we don't yet currently support mass assigning or group level assigning. Um, but I'm sure there's an issue. Please contribute if you want to see that feature in there. Okay. Any other questions before we wrap this up? Okay, I think that's it then. Move on. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, oh, I just see another one's popped up. Uh, Charles uh, says, are there any plans for paid hosted GitLab for smaller teams, for example, under five users? Um, that's an interesting um, question, depending on what you mean by that. There is already um, Git host. We have paid hosted GitLab, both CE and EE currently. Um, so I'm not quite sure what this question is about. Uh, so specifically, oh, specifically enterprise. enterprise. EE. Yeah, we definitely have plans to push um, EE more onto Git host. I think we're actually in the process of renaming it or maybe, um, but uh, right now it's Git host. And um, right now it focuses on CE and EE is something you can talk to us about. We definitely want to be able to let people have EE hosted um, and yeah, any size would be supported then. Okay, last chance. Okay, well, if there are any follow-up questions, you're very welcome to uh, post them uh, in an issue, um, or um, we will be making this uh, a recap of this webcast and uh, recording of it available on the blog, so you're always welcome to post questions on the blog posts as well. Um, thank you all so much for joining us um, and for sending in your questions and for your feedback over the chat. Um, it's been really great, great um, spending time with you talking about 8.16 today. Uh, thank you all again and have a wonderful day. Thank you.